out in Montreal. What was like your first job when you got there? <laughs> okay, so my first job, which I got fired from. Andra, welcome to Real Talk with Star Scorpio. How you doing today? I'm doing really good. I'm so excited to talk to you. Yes, yes, I'm excited to talk to you too. And um, I said in the in the little teaser that I put out that you were like my little sister. You don't know how I, I liked looking out for you back in the days. Uh, yeah, I remember that. You were, yeah, it was great. We used to like work together. Yeah. <laughs> trained me. Yeah. So first, I want to shout out your mom, though, first, right? So oh, yeah. I met okay. your mom when I started my yeah. job. We still work together. And then I met you. you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I met you when you were like 19 at our work Christmas party. I don't know if you remember yeah. that you came to the party. Yeah. But um, some people, you know, I age some people here. Do you mind saying your age here? Because I've known you for a, a, quite a while now. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be 35 this year yeah and I know you since you're 19 crazy crazy. (laughs) okay so first thing Andra um where were you born and raised because I thought before you did your write-up I thought you were born in Toronto but let me know where you're born and raised yeah so I was actually born in Romania Mm -hmm. um I didn't spend a lot of time there I was like three I think when we left like right when the communist revolution happened my parents were like we're out of here Okay. Um, and then we moved to Canada when I was six. Mm-hmm. So before then, we lived like kind of all over Europe, like in Belgium and Germany. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It was hard back then because like they didn't leave like like they weren't like refugees necessarily, but they didn't like they didn't have papers to go anywhere. Yeah. And so, like, it was hard to kind of stay anywhere and, like, find work. And, you know, Europe was, like, very different back then. It wasn't, like, one passport for everyone and you can, like, work wherever, right? So, yeah. Yeah. Wow, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know that, Andre. I didn't know that. So, um, when you came to Toronto, then how old were you when you were in Toronto? I was six. Six, okay. And um, growing up, what were your interests back then? But first, I want to know you. How many languages do you speak? Three. So Romanian, English, French, and French, right? And like a little bit of Spanish, but not enough to like count it. You know. Okay. I is there cross? Is there crossover with some of the languages that you know? Then, like Romanian yeah. or French? Yeah. 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 Like if someone speaks to me in like Spanish or Italian, if they speak slowly enough, I can like figure out what they're saying. Okay. I get it. So some of your interests now growing up, what were you interested in back in the days? Like, did you know what you wanted to do uh, when you were a little kid in Toronto? No, I was interested in being a troublemaker. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, but it changed, like, it honestly, it changed a lot all the time. Like when I, at first I wanted to be an astronaut. Mm -hmm. um because like I think Apollo 11 was a big thing when I was in like third grade so I was like oh cool like I want to be an astronaut and then I wanted to be a fashion designer Mm -hmm. so like you know big big change yeah um and then for a while like I went to university I studied criminology because I thought I would was going to be a lawyer okay Where, where did you go York Oh, you did. You went to New York. You remember the year? What year you went? Yeah. I graduated in 2005. Mm-hmm. So you got a degree in yeah, criminology then? Yeah. Okay. And then when we worked together, it was a, you worked as the call center rep and you're yeah. a bilingual representative. Yeah. But um, what I want to know is when you left Toronto, you went to Montreal. Do you want to talk about um, why you left? Yeah, um, it's com- it's complicated. <laughs> yeah. um, I think, you know, there was some stuff that happened, like, in around that period of my life, like, in my early 20s that I kind of, like, needed a change of scenery from. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was in this, like, very weird relationship that, like, turned abusive. It got really scary, and I think, like... I, I never 
I was trying, I tried, like, it took me years to kind of, like, get over that, but part of the move to Montreal was just that. I mean, at first, I was like, I just need to change the scenery. I'm going to go for the summer. Mm. I'll probably come back. And then, like, I would, like, go back to visit Toronto, and I was just filled with, like, so much anxiety. And I was like, yeah, I can't, like, I can't come back here. Like, I can't. Just being there, like, I wanted to, like, crawl out of my skin. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah. I actually remember that relationship and I remember if it's the same one we're talking about yeah. and um like I did something for you I don't know if you remember this you must remember yeah the wishing but, um, for sure yeah so I, I I took you out we went to eat and I was just hoping that you would have a good experience when you left so I wanted to give you a good farewell and I did and I did take you to the wishing well right and you and you made a wish at Edwards Garden, I believe. Yeah, man. Oh, my God. You're going to make me cry now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I don't know, you know, I don't know if I had an influence on you when you were here. But um, I just appreciated when you, you were on my last end of comedy. Like, I was trying to just, one more chance, you know what I mean? I pushed hard from, like, 2001 to 2007, 8. And then I started filming content and I just appreciated how when I wanted to film something like you were there and I, yeah. thanks for that. What are you doing? You know what I'm doing. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm doing. What is this about? Yeah, well, for me, it really helped me come out of my shell a lot. Mm -hmm. you know for like I think the years leading up to that I was like <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it but like I was just I was like hiding from the world like I wanted to like be seen as little as possible yeah um, and then like those like years of medical alert like it's weird to say it but like finding like the friends that I found there like you or like Christiana like it yeah. really like it I felt like safe again and like it brought out like a, a side of me that had been like hidden for so long and like helped me like learn how to like let go and have fun again and all of wow. those things yeah yeah you never really know what someone's going through like I'm even emotional talking to you right now I'm glad I'm wearing <laughs> my shades right now <laughs> but um yeah so you impacted my life and I impacted yours so yeah that was amazing okay so now in Montreal what was like your first job when you got there <laughs> okay so my <laughs> first job which I got fired from what yeah I got fired oh and like they were totally right to fire me so <laughs> <laughs> okay sure. okay <laughs> um my first job was at a karaoke bar okay so like people if anyone is watching this who lives in Montreal they know like it's a chain of of restaurants owned by this one dude who's like yeah, kind of shady okay um, won't say his name because I don't want to show my house but like he's like sh he's shady but he's a well-known like dude mm. in Montreal um so I worked at the karaoke bar which isn't there anymore and it was like it was really weird so I was a waitress but it was like a bar and I was responsible for the food Mm -hmm. So like you had to like call and order food from this other restaurant owned by the same guy down the street and then like okay. take it to people. But I was like horrible at it. Like I, I'm like, I'm not, attention span is not like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? And like, I was young, we were drinking all the time. Like it was like a very like party atmosphere. I think every single day that I worked there, I had to like, cause like if someone left, mm -hmm. you were, I was stuck with the bill for the food mm -hmm. and it would sometimes like take super long or like I forgot about them or whatever. So like, I never worked a shift where I didn't have to like pay them. Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they were like, you know what? Like just <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh wow so, yeah okay. after that I was like okay office jobs I can do office jobs <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's not for me people don't realize like how hard it is to do that like, oh yeah trust me wait so 
in Toronto and I'm sure many places where speaking French is like an asset, like it's, it's a good thing where you can get jobs. But when you're in Montreal, which is like French, mostly, I don't know, I can say mostly French because there's English speaking people there too. Yeah. Is it the same though, having the bilingual, can you get a job easy? Um, like the English to kind of helps not that much. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I mean, some places are more anglophone. Like I can't make like any sweeping statements, but like for sure, if you don't speak French, yeah. you're very limited mm. in your opportunities. Like there's not a lot that you can do. Like any like client facing thing, yeah. you can't do that, right? Like you can't work in the service industry if you don't speak French. Yeah. Okay. Um, and for some reason, I feel like the cost of living in Montreal is cheaper. I don't know if I heard someone from someone, but is that true? The cost of living is yeah. more affordable? Yeah. So gas is cheaper, mm -hmm. although like nowadays. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's up everywhere now. <laughs> What's it like in so here it's like 165 now. Oh wow. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So but like housing is much cheaper more affordable i heard more affordable yeah but like everything else i think like kind of evens out our salaries are a bit lower mm -hmm. right like even for the same job the salary tends to be like maybe like five to ten k lower yeah so, okay uh, the housing market is really where you like you win big and car insurance is also much cheaper oh cheaper down there okay yeah. I just had um, Sonia on, another fellow Romanian that I worked with. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, we were talking about insurance and we touched on car insurance too. But before, now I want to get into what you do now. So you're a muralist, you're in the art world. But before I ask, I want to know how was it leaving your mom back in Toronto? Because now she's there. So Yeah, she's here now. Yeah, but how was it leaving your it mom? It was hard. It was really hard. Like my mom and I have such a like close relationship especially back then too like we would do everything she was like my best friend right like we would do everything together yeah but, yeah it was really it was really hard and like I think it made me appreciate her a lot more in the sense like first of all all the things that she did for me that I totally totally took for granted until I had to do them for myself like, yeah yeah I'm embarrassed to say this but like I was 23 my mom still did my laundry for me <laughs> yeah 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 like I had a rude awakening when I had to like manage my own household and I would like call her all the time yeah. I don't know if I told you but like thank you <laughs> yeah you you really appreciate your parents your mother father whoever it is when you mm -hmm. leave, I think, and you get a taste of that real life. Because yeah. now, it's, you know what's crazy? Carissa, who you knew, my daughter, as, yeah. I don't know, 13 at the time. Who knows? Um, she's 23 now. And she moved to Guelph. And now, and we taught her, you know, you got to do your laundry yourself yeah. before she left. But now she's living in the house with uh, three other girls. And she's like, the she's OCD like us. Yeah, for everything sure. Everything clean, cooking, yeah. laundry, everything's on point. Yeah, and she's like, I don't know how people live like this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> how do they was, live like this? <laughs> but I had the same thing. Like, I was living with, like, I moved in with my, like, boyfriend at the time. And yeah. even just, like, living with him, I was like, I don't understand. <laughs> who raised you? <laughs> yeah, who raised you? <laughs> Laura yeah. would, like, be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um uh, so wait so budget wise are you good with money too so i got that kind of oh wait did you just shake your head well i'm good with it like i'm good now okay but like at first mm -hmm. it was bad oh man I like i let like i didn't even i didn't have a plan okay like i didn't i had like a vague idea of <laughs> how much money i had which was like none <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 like I would like yeah and then I took a while like I think I had like maybe 900 bucks or something in savings okay. and it took me like three four weeks to get that job where I was making like I told you zero money so like, yeah. I was in trouble it took me like <laughs> years to recover from I think like 
the first like three years were just like a mess financially yeah. speaking and in other ways just speaking but, yeah yeah and then I had to like kind of like recover and rebuild from all that so it was yeah but now I'm like I'm way more careful nice yeah, responsible everything yeah. right yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, so now, Andre, let me know, how did you get into this art world, this being a muralist? Because now you're educating me. So tell me a little bit about this first. So, okay, so it's, it's I mean, it's complicated. There's a few ways to, to kind of go about it. So there's people who do graffiti, yeah. which is like the original kind of like, you know, wild style letter. Mm -hmm graffiti is always like you never you don't ask for permission you yeah just, you do what you do it's like anti-establishment mm -hmm. have a lot of respect for people who do that like well for the like idea for right the, like, yeah I get it. Like, i'm here i exist i want to say something i don't need your permission to do it like i you know i feel that i'm a chicken yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I asked for permission. Mm -hmm. Um and the way I really started was I was living um like where I was living before I had like the view on my balcony was like someone else's garage door. Okay. And like in Montreal there's a lot of like alleyways and stuff like that where all the garage doors are sort of like painted and like it looks really cool and they call it like in French it's called the rue en vert and okay. like you kind of like hang out in the alley and it like it's made like nice and like it's a nice like community thing mm -hmm. um and I kept being like you know someone really should like I, I've been painting for about 10 years as well but never like murals I just did it as like a hobby like different you know different mediums like mm -hmm. watercolors or whatever and wait I, I, don't lose your train of thought yeah. i want to know because you're in a call center and was boring back in the days did you ever scribble like people yeah, all the time you did yeah, yeah. Okay. i used to but like i used to get in trouble i, I think i used to, i don't know if it was the drawing i got in trouble for i know texting I got in trouble <laughs> for all the time yeah, but yeah yeah i used to sometimes bring like my sketchbook and just draw different things and like because it's okay it's repetitive right the work that we we're doing and like I just I needed to like yeah you need an outlet you need to yeah release somehow right yeah okay, it was so something I, I used to love to draw as a kid and then I don't know when or why or whatever I kind of like stopped doing it and then around that time when I was working at medical and I was like hey yeah you used to love this like yeah. I can you know pick this up again mm -hmm. Okay, so do you remember yeah. where you were now? So yeah, okay, so yeah, so I kept telling myself like it'd be really cool if someone like made this alleyway where I was living, like a, a green alleyway, and like people put some art up there, and like I was living there for like a year, and I like I kept saying this to myself, mm -hmm. and then the pandemic hit in 2020 in March, mm -hmm. and so I was home all the time yeah. <laughs> outside on that balcony that was like you know the balcony was like the only place to really go yeah um, and I just like I kept having this thought and then one day I was like you know what like I'm just gonna do it like I'm just gonna ask them if they'll let me do it and like if they say no they say no but like why would they say no because like whatever even if I like bomb this <laughs> and it's yeah. really, like it's better than what exists now so like I'm sure you know <laughs> yeah so yeah so I asked them um this lady Lulu who is one of the um like the condo board people I just like walked on her door one day and she was like yeah great idea <laughs> like oh wow like let's do it and yeah so that's how I got into it okay and it was just you on your own yeah like did you oh wow so you didn't talk to anyone else I did like um before painting that because mm -hmm. I once they agreed um 
and I like I have a tendency to do this right like I'm like I'll do it and then I'm like I don't know what I'm doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. why did I suggest to do this like I don't even know what I'm going to paint at the time I didn't even know how to like even use like a can to paint stuff yeah. I had no idea so I started writing to people on Instagram I found like a bunch of artists like local Montreal artists who mm -hmm. were doing street art on Instagram and I started to write to them <laughs> to be like hi could you please teach me <laughs> yeah. um, I had tried we have like um, a legal wall it's like a, a few like legal spots where you can go and like okay and it's like cool it's legit you won't get a ticket mm -hmm. i had tried that like once before but that was like you know like a little thing it wasn't like a whole like two garage doors which was like huge right right so so i i um i was really lucky and one of the people i wrote to um aldar who's now become like a really good friend Nice. Um, and who I like realize is honestly is just one of the nicest people I met. Like I've seen so many people do the same thing that I did and he like he never turns them down. Yeah. He's always got time to like help them, show them how to do stuff. Like he always like introduces everyone to each other and like He's really great. All around so I, a good person. I like that. Yeah, like mm -hmm. genuinely one of the best people I've met. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so he like, he was like, yeah, sure. Like calm down. And like, I showed up there and he was like, you didn't even bring any paint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, oh, like, shoot, <laughs> was I supposed to do that? Yeah, yeah. And he was like, all right, like, whatever, noob, like, okay, grab a can. <laughs> like, yeah. How do you do this? I'm going to do the outline. So, like, he did, like, the outlines, and he let me do, like, like fill in some things so I could kind of, like, get a feel for how it works. Mm -hmm. And then, like, a week later, I was, like, starting on my own mural and having to, like, figure it out <laughs> yeah <laughs> wow it works yeah i would like have to like call them and be like okay like i'm trying to do this it's not working yeah. <laughs> wait so i want to know so you kind of told me about the location so you're talking about the garages and then there was that that legal place that you can but yeah. is it still safe to me safe to ask like how do you choose your locations because it's gone beyond that too right or is it yeah. still Mm -hmm. yeah so I always ask I've always asked for permission um and people who are like graphers are <laughs> gonna say I have no business doing yeah. things like that which is you know I guess like fair um I always just ask so yeah so how I pick my location I just literally I go around and like if anyone will let me do a mural there I happy to do it oh. like it's not really like me I choose I just like sure let's do it like anyone yeah. who wants a mural you can have a mural inside outside like whatever it is I like that I like that and now your confidence has grown since you you started right yeah I'm like way better now for yeah. sure I still have a lot to learn and like I'm not you know where I I'm not able to do you know there's like a vision in my head of what I would like something to look like mm -hmm. I'm not I'm far from being there yet, but like, I know, you know, I'll get there. Yeah. So that leads to this now. So, so what influences your art then? Um, I think a lot of it is like just past experience. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of it is like how I'm feeling at the time, like what I'm interested in, like that, that first one I did, um, the, like the Medusa one, I was I was just obsessed with that theme that year. Like I felt like we needed like a protection spell <laughs> okay. for everything that was happening. Cause it was yeah. like three months into the pandemic, everyone was terrified. No one knew what was going on. And I was like, mm -hmm. we need like a strong woman <laughs> to yeah. like, keep us. <laughs> wait, wait. So that, that's on your IG, right? Cause I got to show people when, yeah. when people watch the yeah. videos, I'm going to put some of your your work yeah, up yeah, yeah. so I'm going to show that one there yeah you need that protection yeah um yeah so what else what else what else influences yeah um the rest is just like 
I like, I love flowers and mm-hmm. plants. So I try to like put some of that in there. Cause I, I just want, you know, I think, I think my goal is to like make the world a nicer place. Mm-hmm. And like, Great. it's really hokey. And cheesy. <laughs> no, no, no. We're on the same path, Andre. I'm right? on the same but, way like, right now. Yeah. Like, I just want to add like color and life where things would otherwise be like gray and cold yeah so now okay so now tell me about your creative process though you got a blank canvas you got your your paid your tools <laughs> what's the creative process like from beginning um, to the end it's an emotional roller coaster for yeah. me personally mm-hmm. so i've got like a lot of um like perfectionism yeah and i think my art is like in in large part my art is like the tool I'm using to like overcome that and get out of my head and mm-hmm. like just do something um so like the at first it's this very much this like imposter syndrome saying like you don't know what you're doing yep you're gonna mess this up mm-hmm. it's gonna be ugly mm-hmm. no one's gonna like this you're wasting your time here like who do you even think you are like this wow. like, this whole like really negative like self-talk thing Mm -hmm. that I go through um and then I have to like tell that voice to like shut up (laughs) that's what I'm saying let me concentrate (laughs) because what I'm doing is really difficult so like (laughs) and then you know and then it like I, I I try to get like the big pieces in yeah and it it still feels like it feels very like shaky right it's like uh it could go like either way I don't know I'm not sure and then like slowly the more I the more I get into it I would say probably like the first day Mm -hmm. of every mural at the end of it I'm like I want to cry (laughs) I want to give up (laughs) I hate this (laughs) why do I even bother doing this like I don't know um and then like day two I'm like okay do this Mm -hmm. and then it starts to kind of like look how I want it to look and Mm -hmm. we're like we're getting in the right place and then I could I it's like the complete opposite and I become historically the baddest bitch ever (laughs) (laughs) tell me different and I get (laughs) all excited and like yeah (laughs) wait so this process now so you just said the next day how long does it take to finish like an average piece or like, what am I looking at? Um, so like I'm faster now mm-hmm. than I was. I think the first piece took me like two weeks. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Like it's huge. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a huge canvas. Yeah. So, but now like the last big one I did, that was maybe like, I want to say like maybe like 30 feet wide and like nine feet tall Mm -hmm. I did it in like a week oh that's good yeah like eight hour days almost Mm -hmm. maybe six (laughs) it's like that's I, I I admire that and because you're talking about that height and that width you I think I seen a picture of you on a ladder were you on a ladder like you Sometimes it's yeah. really high up, right? And yeah, a ladder. For one of the pieces I did, I had to rent. Oh, that was like a whole comedy special. <laughs> I yeah. had to rent <laughs> yeah. a spy jack. Yeah. So it's like this little machine. You and operate like, it, it's right? It's a lift, right? Yeah. But like, you have to like drive it around. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> it was yeah like I had to parallel park it essentially like close to the wall where I was painting Mm -hmm. and and then like the first time I kind of like lifted it as high as it could go because I needed to get up there yeah I realized that like I only had like three of the wheels on the ground okay so like I shifted my weight and the whole thing (laughs) kind of shifted and I was like well this is this is where the story ends oh my god (laughs) I'm dead now like the end damn that's serious though yeah yeah it's uh 
it's fun. It's fun. It's like very physical work too. Yeah. Cause if, I, if there's no skyjack, then like you're up and down a ladder yeah. anytime you need to change like paint colors, which is often you down the ladder, get another can up the ladder. Like, yeah. Wow. So, um, I've seen some of your pieces. Um, what's your favorite piece that you like? Um, wait, is it fine for me to call it a piece? I don't even know. Yeah. 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 My favorite piece. I don't know, you know, I don't know if I can, like, I don't know if I can pick one. The first one I did was the first one. So it has like a really deep significance. Okay. Um, I think there's a wall I did with like a bunch of flowers. That one I think is just beautiful. Like I love looking at it. So it's yeah. my favorite from like that perspective. Um, I think, I think though Eve was like Eve, which is, it's like this purple woman. Mm -hmm. She's like coming out of a body of water. Um, that one really like, that was the first time I realized that like I could I can do this. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I can I can make this something. Mm -hmm. Um and like just the the way that that piece like really represents where I feel my best. Mm -hmm. Just like in a big body of water, just like chilling. <laughs> yeah know? yeah <laughs> i think it's yeah i think it's that one i'm like yeah it's that's cool can you actually tell me about a piece so we talked about your influence and um your creative process but can you tell me off the top of your head if there was something that happened in the world um where it inspired you to to make some to um make a design whatever i'm trying to say here do you know what i'm saying like um like some a world event that happened where you said you want to put it on a canvas yeah um honestly a lot of things a lot of things i have a lot of ideas that i don't actually execute so there's okay. like, yeah there's a few things um one of the things i guess that i like most closely that really hits home for me is like immigration right and like mm -hmm. people getting to feel like they have a safe space in the world like yeah right? it's a it's a big deal for me so like when like recently when um when like the u.s was pulling their troops out of Af afghanistan and it like yeah. people were like there was that one news coverage of someone like giving the baby to someone to take like that was like heartbreaking but things yeah. like that I don't even I don't even know where I like how I would visually represent how that makes me feel inside right and it like I think it's like it's one of those things where I would like to do more things like that but it feels so and like this is the thing about art is like that's how you know mm -hmm. that's thing that you should be painting yeah. but like it feels too like tender yeah right like I don't know how to talk about that in my art and like I feel like it's such a huge thing that like I don't even feel like I could how do you do something like that justice like you know what I mean that's it's a lot um I get it <laughs> yeah but um one of the murals I painted was of, of Nadia Komenich. Ooh, Olympian. She was, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And she was like, you know, the first to get a perfect tendon gymnastics. And mm -hmm. I think a, like, I was really into, like she is from the same town that my mom is from in Romania. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and my mom was a gymnast as well. And like, it's, you know, it really like spoke to me. And then I, like, I read her about her story and like what she had to carry at yeah. such a young age, you know, like coming from a communist country where it's like, there's no margin for error. Yeah. Like, if you mess up, 
you get disappeared. <laughs> like, it's yeah, it's like all oh, boohoo, you come home to Canada and like your family's there waiting for you. Like, yeah. And, you know, I think she was like 14 or something. I don't remember exactly the age, but like 14 when she, when she did that, like mm-hmm. at 14 in front of like the whole world to do something like that. Like, I don't, I can't imagine like, being like that strong like I can't think of like another way of strength to exist that's stronger than that you know what I mean and like we never we rarely get representation of like young girls being so strong but like they are yeah they really are and like yeah that's like one thing that like it just really yeah, it really spoke to me, like, that, that idea that, like, she could go to a t- completely different country and, like, stay, like, stoic the whole time, like, straight face, like, mm-hmm. hair perfect, just, like, I'm gonna do this, and, like, y'all can kiss my ass. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it yeah, that I I remember because I was young. I remember Nadia Comedy. That's how I found out. You know how you don't really know things as a kid. Different countries, you know about the U.S. and these different countries, whatever, where my parents are from. But um, Romania. That's where I first heard about yeah. Romania. You yeah, know, and like that's where a Comunis. lot of people first heard yeah. about Romania. Yeah, amazing. Um, yo, let me know about your IG handle. Like, so what is it like? Is it a word or is it just X? Tell me what your IG handle means. (laughs) So snacks, it's a word. It's like snacks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So this um, came from, so my best friend and I, we we have these like great conversations. Um, And I think in... I don't I think like beginning of pandemic maybe like right before we were taught we were like exchanging work horror stories okay (laughs) and then it turned into like you know like horror stories with men and then just horror stories and and we were like isn't it weird how like some people can be so opposite Mm -hmm. to like everything that's like decent and normal and like it doesn't like they just who are these people who can like make some of the decisions that like you know I won't get into details but like you know who does that yeah yeah and and then one of us I don't remember who was like yeah it's like you're the kid at the sleepover who when like the mom comes in and was like you guys want something to like snack on okay they're like no and then they like go to bed and they're the first one to sleep <laughs> it's yeah like, it's contrary like they're just wrong in their core you're just wrong yeah um and then so then the same like yes to snacks kind of like came out and then the pandemic came and we were spending a lot of time together making (laughs) snacks yeah yeah the world was being real mean to us (laughs) so yeah so that's that's where the name came from that's where it came okay that's where it spawned from okay so now we did we touched on the pandemic i want to know like a lot of people go through like the mental health um and it really came out now and i really feel bad for young kids and what they're going through they grew up wearing masks a lot of these young kids but for you how has it affected your mental health um yeah honestly it's hard to it's hard for so I whine and complain about it constantly like I hate this whole thing like since the beginning it's been like super annoying about how I think it sucks um Mm -hmm. but at the same time like I'm really privileged like I get to work from home like I still have a job like I'm not worried about like money or anything like Mm -hmm. the mask is really annoying to wear but like it doesn't affect me like that much yeah but you know it's hard not to I think already in our society like a lot of people feel like a rat in a cage and now more than ever like cooped up in your house 
mm-hmm. like with you know and I won't get too political but like all these like punitive me- like in, in Quebec like last year we had a curfew I heard about that we had at like eight o'clock and oh yeah you were living that experience like yeah okay it was horrible like yeah. you just feel like there is no point to anything that you're doing like what am I what am I here for like what am I doing here <laughs> like yeah I work till five I have like three hours to like go to the grocery store mm-hmm. and that, like it's the only place I can really go yeah and then I come home I make dinner and like I can't go for a walk or you know like leave my house or whatever and like it's all like I can't like you know go see my mom who like frankly like I'm gonna see my mom anyways like yeah pandemic, yeah like, pandemic like yeah, yeah. I'm, see my mom. I'm sorry yeah <laughs> um yeah but like you know you have to like be really careful then you're like speeding down all stressed out to like get home to make sure you make it home by eight or else you'll get like a huge fine and it's like how is this who is this helping (laughs) yeah you know what's while you're talking about that uh, sonia was educating me on how it was in romania yeah the the strict rules the government and it seems like that's what was happening in quebec when i heard about the lockdowns and the curfew and i was like whoa because toronto yeah we had you know, in 2020, it was the crazy lockdown. And then they released, what do you, relaxed restrictions. Yeah. But that's when I was hearing about Quebec. And I was like, how do you, how do you live like that? Yeah, yeah, it's hard. And you feel, and like, I think, well, right now with like the trucker thing that's happening, I think a lot of people are, like a lot of what they're saying is like, this is just like communism. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, I get it. Mm-hmm. And then a lot of people on the left are like, you still have all of your rights, but like, you don't. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't have all, like, okay, you still have like the right to vote. You can still, you have like free speech. You have like your fundamental human rights, right? But like, right. you can't, if, you, if I can't leave my house when I want to leave my house, like, yeah, that's, I have all my rights. Like, yeah, that's serious. But they would really find people though. Would they really sit there and write a ticket and give it to you? I don't know. I don't but like my relationship with police is like, I don't know how they do what they do. <laughs> like, I don't know how you're at like you don't this this is these are the people that I'm telling you. Like you're the person turning down snacks at the sleep. <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. Um but yeah I think I don't know if they like really gave out that many fines or if they did it a bit for show yeah like say like you know we're here like we're gonna do this but I like at first so the first curfew you had the exception that like you could leave your house if you have to walk your dog oh I heard about that Mm -hmm. so so this one woman put a leash on her husband (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and she was like why i'm walking my dog yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like they got fine i know that like in like certain communities like um like not everybody like respected it right and so yeah. like those places would be more heavily policed and like you know i think people got fined but like i can't imagine yeah. like you know yeah, I get it. Man, okay, so Anjo, what I like to do sometimes is ask people to share like advice for for young people like again, I'm growing my channel. Someone's going to see this that's young coming up. Um do you have any advice for someone who who's struggling with what they want to do and they're stuck in that little rut? So you just think back of when you didn't know what you wanted to do. You probably were insecure about certain things. And then finally you get that light bulb, but some people want to quit their aspirations or dreams. Do you have any advice for anyone out there? Yeah. Um, Like a a few things. Mm -hmm. So one thing is like, sometimes 
doing what you love as a hobby and not a way of living it's it can be better than trying to earn money making your art so like anytime you have to like remember that like anytime you like sell something Mm -hmm. your your artistic vision is not yours and yours alone so like you're selling off that little piece of yourself okay and like you're gonna have to compromise like you're gonna have clients who want certain things you're gonna have like edits from other people you're gonna have some things that like you just can't say or things like that so like sometimes if you really love something there's nothing wrong I feel like there's this whole culture around like do what you love and like and and it's great and like you should pursue your dreams and I totally support that but like if for some reason you decide that like I love this thing I'm gonna just do it as a hobby I can make my money doing a bunch of other things that like maybe I don't love them but like I can like you know it's it's sustainable I can like feed my family I can like you know it opens up a lot of doors like like and I'm saying this because like this is the situation that I'm in, right? like, yeah. murals are like not my bread and butter I would love for them to be yeah. but like I have a whole career that right. like helps me fund the art okay and, like, yeah and it's and it's great and like there's you know, some some days I hate <laughs> like the nine to five. Yeah. Some days I hate muraling, and some days I love both. Right, but like mm-hmm. you don't have to like feel bad because you're not doing this to to earn a living. Mm-hmm. But then the flip side of that is like I think it took me well twelve years, to, maybe yeah. ten years, to like get to where I am in my career professionally Mm -hmm. and then about like two maybe three years ago I started to get more serious about like turning what I'm passionate about into like a revenue source yeah and I was like you know if I had spent 10 years Mm -hmm. working on my art full-time and figuring out how to make that work I would be there by now yeah but I get so, it's a it's a learning process you went down the yeah. path that you were supposed to yeah. go down right yeah but there's no like there's no wrong way to do it yeah but the you know like the worst thing you can do is not start oh I like that I like but that every you know you life is short and like you only have so many years left for and the other thing is like when you're young in your 20s like you're broke anyways so like, you know, <laughs> like, like you're broke you're gonna be broke it's the whole point of being in your early 20s is like you learn how to be broke so yeah, yeah. get unbroke yeah so, like, sometimes it's you know you don't always have to pursue the things that are like, like from a financially insecure perspective right like you can just try to do your art maybe it'll take off yeah maybe it won't but like try to do it Mm -hmm. nice thanks for sharing that okay so andra part of real talk with star scorpio on season two i have two cards here okay um and you're going to answer one of the questions so with my hand tell me which one you want me to read oh boy um okay uh right hand Name one challenging thing you had to overcome in life. (laughs) Um, Like the most challenge? I don't know. I don't know. Um, This is a tough one. Just name one. Just just name one. Just do it. Yeah. Tanya said, do do we have time? Do we have an Excel spreadsheet? yeah right like how much time do we have left? yeah yeah <laughs> I think the I think the one that I'm still overcoming I guess and I think the one that like kind of stays with you mm. 
for your whole life is like you can either be your best friend or your worst enemy wow okay. and like you you decide mm-hmm. and and no one can like make that cha- like that choice for you mm-hmm. but it's a choice that you make every second of every day like everything is a choice any time you're choosing you know like even like silly things like am I gonna have like am I gonna like let this person who am I gonna let this guy talk to me like that like no the fuck I'm not like yeah 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 I'm like you know like am I gonna have like mcdonald's or like a healthy meal am i gonna like work out or sit on my couch am i gonna paint or am i gonna like waste my time scrolling through my phone like all of it at the end like the accumulation of those like little choices every day like Mm -hmm. that's what makes a difference in your life and like that's a lot of pressure to choose right all the time but like you don't like you don't have to be perfect sometimes you're allowed to choose like the bad thing so like that's the that's the battle I guess that like I have to overcome is like knowing that and then like not holding myself to like an impossible standard and like forgiving myself for the times when like I chose wrong wow you're you're hitting you're saying all the gems this is what people need to hear um and over time hopefully people always choose the better the better side right but I was the same way like I was always negative towards myself back in the days, man, but come to a realization I can't live like that. Yeah. Spread the love and show people that, you know, they're worth something and, you know, do your best, make the, make good choices in life. Yeah. Yeah. And like, you don't have to be like prime minister of Canada or like a super big shot, whatever. You can be just a regular person. Yeah. And like, you can still, I think, like consider yourself successful based on how you make people feel. And like, are you out there like inspiring love Mm -hmm. or, you know, that, but I guess that's like my measure of success, right? Like, am I making the world better? Am I adding anything to it? Knowing that like, I'm a drop in an ocean, right? But like, it doesn't matter, like. Yeah. Whoa, Andre, you got gems, but I gotta go back and watch this. <laughs> Drop it in an ocean and go. Oh, gotta take from this. Okay, Andre, so I'm also doing this for good causes, right? So you're gonna see three balloons in a second. Hold on, right? All right. So after every episode, my guest um, picks a balloon and um, I'll know which charity that I'm donating to by the one I pop. Um, And the three charities for season two are Up With Women, the Mississauga Humane Society, and the Fundraiser Warriors. So, Andra, again, my hands. Tell me which one you want me to pop. Um, I think that orange one. Is it orange? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. The sixth charity that I'm donating to is the Fundraiser Warriors. They are killing it this season. Yeah. Yes. What um, do they do? Oh, two sets of brothers donating, um, generating money for good causes. So they're actually going to be on Real Talk in March. Oh, that's dope. I'm so excited to have them on the show. I think one one of the young boys has a brain tumor and he's going through chemo so I don't know if I'm going to get emotional on that show but um, I'm excited to talk to them and um, I've donated so much to them so this is so nice because they give back like I like to do now Mm -hmm. but um, Andrea thank you for coming out let the people know where they could find you yeah thank you for having me Um, so you can find me on Instagram xo dot snacks yeah um, or <laughs> my website is andrapostavaru.com mm-hmm. all right Audra, this was great this is uh episode six of season two in the books and we out <laughs> we out thank you so much peter